<laughs> hey, want to burn a couple of vacation days sleeping on the ground outside? Uh, no. What if I told you to get to crap standing up in the woods? Finally, doing part three of my series on how to save money on backpacking or doing the GMT. Uh, this one's on gear, and I'm just going to give you some ideas. So first of all, you don't want to go cheap on gear that's going to put you in danger because it's cold, or you, you don't want to be stuck with the wrong gear, or, some, or something that's going to compromise the comfort of your hike. So there's no use going on this a great long through hike and being uncomfortable. So there's a few things you've got to just bite the bullet and, and spend some money on, but I'll give you a lot of ideas on how to get stuff for cheap. So uh, the main things that are really hard to save money on are backpacks and sleeping bags and tents. Uh, so, but they are important. So uh, I'm going to give you some ideas on where to get those things for a lesser price. First of all, I want to talk about REI. I'm a big REI fan because of the return policy. You can return anything, no questions asked, within a year of purchasing it. REI has to get rid of that stuff, so they sell it at what they call garage sales. So uh, about once every six weeks or so, they'll have a garage sale. Now, I know a lot of you don't have an REI in your area, but you can buy some of this stuff online, not the garage sale. So the garage sales are a Saturday item a Saturday thing you go in and you line up and you scavenge through all this return stuff. Great place to buy. Use boots, use tents, backpacks, things like that. Uh, you got to get there early. I've got great deals on sleeping bags and boots and things like that. So if you have an REI nearby, check out their return sales. Uh, and check out any gear stores, any big gear stores you have. They might have a similar type thing where they get rid of their returns or their used gear. A lot of times, uh, a lot of places will rent gear, which is an option. If you're not planning on dedicating a lot of time to backpacking, you're just doing a through hike and you're just gonna acquire gear, you might look at renting some products. But garage sales are great. Uh, Craigslist is a great place to find things. Goodwill is a great place to find clothes. Uh, so don't rule out those things. I know it sounds crazy, but uh, so for the big items, uh, go to a reputable uh, outdoor store. You need to get fitted for a couple of things. A backpack needs to fit you, or else on a through hike, it's gonna kill you. So uh, I like to go to a store like REI and try on the packs. They don't have everything. There's things called cottage industry uh, companies that make awesome stuff, but it's kind of pricey. Uh, so the big sporting goods stores tend to sell things like Ospreys and Gregory's. They're great packs. They're not, they're not super light. For a through hike, they're good. Uh, and most ultra light stuff costs a fortune. So this is aimed at people who are trying to acquire decent gear at a decent price and that's relatively uh, safe for you to take on a, on a through hike. So, uh, back to the backpacks, the reason I like a store like an REI is they have uh, sales clerks that know what they're doing. And you need to have, buy one that, that fits. I'm 6'3", and I always thought I would wear a large backpack, but I went and got fitted and it turns out a medium fits me better. So, you know, when I'm, I spent 300 bucks on a backpack, it better fit. So same thing, I got my feet, uh, measured at REI and I've been wearing 12s all my life and turns out I'm flat footed now and now I'm a 13. So those are important things you need to take care of before a hike. So what I like to do, I'll go to one of those big sporting goods stores and find a pack or a sleeping bag or a tent that I really like and I'll try it out in the store and get fitted. I buy so much stuff from REI, I don't have a problem telling you to do this, to do the same. Uh, find a pack you like and then go online and find it somewhere else and look for a sale. Uh, I, I backpack a lot so I like to have good gear. Uh, I did buy a really nice down sleeping bag at R an REI used gear sale for $50. But uh, this is my sleeping bag, it's a Marmot Helium. It's a $400 sleeping bag. 
It weighs less than two pounds. It's a 15 degree rated sleeping bag. It's great, but I'm not recommending you spend $400 on a sleeping bag. So what I did, I went, REI carries these. I like them, I looked at them, decided to buy them online, found somebody that had a sale that was 25% off. So, uh, and a lot of these online companies ship, ship for free and they don't charge you tax. So I got a $400 sleeping bag with tax, it would have been like 440 bucks. I got it for 300 bucks. So that's an ex that's a extreme example because it's a high dollar item, but it makes it makes it worth your while to look for that option. But uh, you lose the return option that REI has. I really like to be able to return things there. So uh, other examples of the REI garage sale. I bought this pad uh, for 20 bucks. It had a hole in it. I patched it up. It's not a full length pad because I like to go small. This is a, REI sells a pad like this for 100 bucks. Sounds like a lot. So 20 bucks was a good deal. But you could spend $200 on a sleeping pad. I highly recommend blow up sleeping pads because uh, the alternative, if you're, if you're young, you could probably deal with this. This is a Thermarest Z-Lite. These are real popular. You'll see a lot of through bikers, PCTers use these. And these are about $35, so, and they're super durable. They're relatively comfortable. If you're a side sleeper, forget it. I tried to use this on the JMT on my through hike, and it was a bad decision, and it, I did not sleep well. But a lot of times, especially in winter, I'll bring this and this, and since this isn't a full length pad, you can get by with one of these, and then throw clothes or your empty pack at your feet to keep warm. And then since I'm a side sleeper, you can just cut off a hunk of this, throw it on the back of your pack, and you can sit on it in camp. You can't take these outside your tent because they'll pop really easy. So this is a cheap sleeping option, but you need a blow-up pad. So you'll see tons of these on places like Craigslist. For so what we were looking for is the guy like me who's getting rid of my older stuff and spending some money on some ultralight stuff, but my old stuff is still good. So uh, here's an example of something I bought on Craigslist. I got this for 30 bucks. This is called uh, the Bear Vault, uh, Bear Vault 500. It's really common for long through hikers. They're 80 bucks, so they're pretty pricey. But a lot of people do trips like this, you know, JMT or PCT is kind of a bucket list thing. And I'll, there's a lot of these used ones floating around. Another idea on the bear canisters, there is a company called Wild Ideas. They make them kind of the, the Cadillac of bear, bear canisters. It's called the, uh, the Bear Vault. Not Bear Vault, Bear Barricade. Barricade. They're like 300 bucks for a freaking bear canister. The reason they're popular, you can get them in custom sizes and you can get them a little bigger and they'll still fit in a pack and you can go long distances. So 300, 300 plus dollars, 350 dollars for a bear canister sounds really ridiculous. Saves you about a pound and a half. Why would I recommend that on, on a video where you're, good, you're trying to save money? Because there is a very, very good aftermarket for that product. You can buy one of those. This company's called Wild Ideas. Take it on a through hike and then sell it at almost full price. You might buy it for 350 bucks, you might sell it for 330 bucks. I'll guarantee you will sell that. Uh, and there's a, a Yahoo Jam, uh, John Muir Trail Group's uh, blog on, uh, on the JMT. People sell them on there all the time. Look for used gear lists online. Uh, people, whenever they post one of those, they sell within hours easily so that's an idea if you're not going to use these all all the time and you're just doing this once buy one of those and just get rid of it uh, sell it yourself afterwards so so backpacks and sleeping bags you can still buy them at a place like REI what REI does is they have kind of a clearance site they just changed it today as a matter of fact it used to be called the REI outlet go to REI.com and one of their, their choices, they change it to the garage. I don't know why, but it's the same thing. They'll sell gear like uh, sleeping bags and, and uh, backpacks and tents for clearance. They're just getting, what it is, it's the same stuff. 
it's last year's model. So my daughter needed a new pack. She went to RAI, tried them all on. She likes Gregory packs. I'm an Osprey guy myself. So we found last year's model on their clearance site for 30% off from their current year's prices from the current year model. And they always have sales a few times a year. Well, they'll, they'll even have a 20 or 30% off a clearance item. So I think her backpack was like $279, but then they had it on the clearance site for about $199, and then I got a 30% coupon on top of that. So I got a, got a really good pack for $150. Same thing on sleeping bags. There's always really good stuff on there. Uh, probably the cheapest sleeping bag I can think of that you can buy new that's usable on the JMT is probably the Kelty Cosmic. It's a down sleeping bag, goes for about 130, 140 bucks. I know that sounds like a lot, but uh, a word about down sleeping bags, if you're not familiar with how, the way down works, they're, they have a rating system on what the, how good the fill is. There's like a 600 fill is kind of low end. It, it works, it just doesn't compress and fluff up. You can't get it really small. Uh, the one I have is like 850 fill. I think 900 fill is the, the highest rating. Yeah, this is 850 fill. And this thing will compact down almost the size of a Nalgene bottle. And it will keep you a lot warmer in a, in a smaller package. So look at the ratings if you're buying used, used gear, especially on used sleeping bags. Uh, look at what the down is rated. That, that will make a big difference. So. Uh, tents, there's a lot of different kind of tents. REI's low end brand tent is called the Half Dome. They're a little heavier. Basically on tents you're paying for weight. Alps make some pretty cheap tents, ALPS, that are in the neighborhood of $150 to $200 for a decent backpacking tent. But again, look on Craigslist, use gear sites, or the REI clearance uh, site, the, what they call the garage, for discounts. And even on full price items, REI has a sale several times a year where they, it's 20% off one full price item. So, uh, and I have my credit card tied to REI and I imagine you can do it with other stores. So all my points I use, uh, every time I buy things, I, I get credits to, uh, uh, they have a dividend, it's a co-op. So. Uh, those are the, the big ones. Now you can save a lot of money on a lot of other stuff. Let's go to, let's go to water. Uh, you do not need to take water bottles. Just use plastic bottles. I like these smart bottles. They're light, they're indestructible, and you know, you don't need to have a fancy bottle. Uh, the reason I like these is because one of my suggestions, especially for a through hike, are these little mini Sawyers water filters and they screw on to your water bottle. So if you have a couple of these water bottles, that's all you would need on the JMT. Uh, you, this would be my dirty water bottle. What you do, you take the dirty water and squeeze it. These are great, they're super lightweight, probably the lightest and they're cheap. These filters cost about 35, 40 bucks. These only work where the water's clear and on the JMT the water is clear. It doesn't work on good on dirty water or silty water, but there's Tons of great clean water on the JMT. I mean, you're just going to use the water filters to get rid of the giardasis that's in the water so you don't get sick. Uh, they have a bigger version too. This is what I took on the JMT and it broke on me. So you need to have a backup water filtration system too. Uh, I like the Aquamira tablets. Uh, there's lots of little tablets you can treat stuff with, but it takes four hours for that to get uh, to be ready for, for drinking. So the old pump filters, I won't even go in those. They're kind of obsolete, they're heavy. Some people still like them. I'm, I'm sold on these. Another word of caution on these, they can't get below freezing because the cartridge can freeze. So if you do take this on a through hike and it gets below 30 degrees, 32 degrees, take them in your sleeping bag with you. Otherwise, you won't know if they're broken, so make sure you know what you're doing. These uh, SteriPens are really cool. I won't go into details on them, but they use ultraviolet light. Don't like them for through hiking. Uh, they're relatively cheap now too. They're about 60, 70 bucks. And you don't have to squeak, you know, pump, like a pump filter. But I don't recommend them because they use batteries. And when it gets cold, batteries tend to, tend to die on you. So they're not reliable on a long hike. For weekends, it's great. 
Uh, I'm going to do a review, separate review, review on this. I've just got this Platypus Gravity filter. It's kind of like a filter like this, but it's just basically two liter bags. You fill one up, you hang it on a, a rock or a tree, and it's gravity. And you get two liters extremely quickly. Uh, it's pretty awesome, but it's not uh, something for how to do the GMT for cheap, because these are $120. But uh, water filtration is really important. So you, if you had a, more than a couple people going, you could just bring a couple of these and in case one breaks. Each person will have one. They're, this is probably your, your cheapest reliable option for water filtration on the trail. So other places you can save money. Let's go to the kitchen. Uh, in the kitchen, you're probably going to be boiling a lot of water, doing a little bit of cooking. This is what's known as a titanium pot. Super light. Costs like 80 bucks. You don't need something like this. It's great. I hike a lot, so I have a lot of really expensive gear. But uh, uh, you can get aluminum. Aluminum is great. It's uh, it's not as light as this, but it cook. It's actually cooks better. It's better for cooking because it spreads out the heat. Titanium is really good for just boiling water. So you can find cheap aluminum. That's another thing that I bought off Craigslist too uh, for pretty cheap. People again, people upgrading their gear. They'll, they'll get rid of old stuff like that. Now, pot, uh, your, your bowls and utensils and things like that you're using in camp, there's all kinds of fancy bowls and things you can buy. Uh, this is a tip I always give newbies. You don't need to buy a fancy bowl. This is a really cheap plastic, plastic bowl. And I just used a hole punch, punched a hole in it that hangs on the back outside of my pack. It's really light. That's a really good idea. And uh, if you do things like this, and since you're not going to bring, if you follow my advice, you're not going to be bringing those big uh, Nalgene bottles like this. The beauty of the Nalgene bottles is they have measuring increments on them. Take a bowl like this or, and uh, pour in uh, two cups of water and draw a line so, or scratch it so it doesn't wear off. So you, you can still measure things, but you gotta do that before you leave. Uh, another good thing for a bowl, just a super lightweight Tupperware with a lid, kinda comes in handy. The reason I like the lids is you can put stuff in it, and for washing, you shake it. And I've given this advice on other videos. On a through hike, a big jar of peanut butter is kind of a good food to have. And when, this is, when you're done eating the peanut butter, this be, can become your eating and rehydrating system and you can use this as a mug or and same thing if you're going to use something like this before you go home before you leave home draw a line on it so you'll know what one cup is what two cups is and that's something good to have on the trail so uh just things like utensils you can just use plastic forks i like these long ones because they're good to get into freeze-dried things so uh now, the other things you need to do, shoes, you don't need to spend $250 on a pair of hiking boots. In fact, heavy hiking boots are not something I would even recommend for a through hike. I would go with a lighter, breathable shoe. A lot of people are using cross trainers. Uh, just a word of caution on the cross trainers, like tennis shoe type shoes. Uh, you have to lessen your weight on your back first. If, you're, uh, if your stuff's too heavy, uh, you're, gonna, you're gonna need more support. I like to use a lightweight boot. Uh, and I like the breathable boots, but if you're gonna be doing this in the spring or if there's gonna be a chance of rain, uh, waterproof nice. I'm not a big fan of Gore-Tex. I like leather boots that you would treat with a nick wax or some kind of treatment to, to keep make sure they are waterproof and an example of a boot that i like uh, uh, you need to just go out and try some yourself but one i like that's pretty cheap <coughs> i can usually find these on amazon for about 60 or 70 bucks is it's a high-tech altitude four it's a cheap boot they're really comfortable out of the box and they're waterproof uh, i've used those on a lot of trips i also have 250 dollars pairs of boots uh, those are more for like winter 
and mountaineering type type things, not for not for through hiking. I don't use cross trainers, so I can't give advice on those. But those are a good option if you can keep keep your weights down. So, uh, yeah, shoes or shoes and socks. Don't go cheap on the socks. So clothes is another thing. You can spend a fortune on clothes. Not necessary. Uh, I have been hiking in these shorts for about five years. They're not stylish. They are kind of kind of cool shorts. They got a little breathable thing here. They're made. They're hundred percent polyester. I don't even. I don't even know the brand. I bought these for three dollars at Goodwill, and I just was looking for polyester things. I look for in shorts. Any kind of running short is great. I, I'm a short pants guy. A lot of people wear long pants or those uh, those convertible pants. I never use the bottoms of convertible pants, so I stopped bringing those. But those are nice. Uh, there's a High Sierra brand that's pretty reasonable. You can spend a hundred hundred dollars on a pair of those. But if you look around, REI Outlet Site's a great time to uh, find something like that for forty bucks for a pair of good hiking shorts. But uh, I like to go with the shorts. Now, what I'm li I like about a short, I like to have one that has a zipper on the back pocket. That way I can put something like car keys or a permit or something that I need to feel secure is not going to fall out of my, my shorts. And this also has regular pockets. So it's polyester, dries real fast. Uh, needs to be paired with a decent pair of sh uh, underwear. I do not buy my underwear at Goodwill. Uh, so you can spend $30 on a pair of underwear. Uh, but it's really important to use polyester or polypropylene, something that dries fast, otherwise you, you can develop problems. So uh, a good pair of nylon shorts or polypropylene shorts like these, paired with some good underwear, will do a good job. Same with the boots, make sure you get mer merino wool is another great product. So for the rest of your clothes, you can find stuff pretty cheap. Now polyester and polypropylene is what you're looking for and fleece for your layering systems. This is a REI shirt. It's just a polyester shirt. I bought this about five years ago. Poly po Merino wool is awesome but it, it wears out fast. That's why I like, I like these uh, polypropylenes but these things stink. You can find uh, shirts that have like crushed things in the fibers. I don't know what it's even called but Supposedly it keeps you from stinking, but I don't care. It keeps people away from me. I like I like my solitude. But I've got I picked this up at on the outlet site, REI outlet site. It was a forty dollar t shirt. It was half off and then I had a thirty percent off on that. So I got it for like thirteen dollars. So that's pretty good for a good a good shirt that I've had for years and years, got a lot of miles out of out of it. This is a an example of something I got at Walmart. It's a Nike polyester shirt and made in Mexico, but it was $10. Super lightweight. Now you, you should probably get like a, a short sleeve, a couple of these and a long sleeve. It's all about layering with your clothes. So you got to make sure you have good clothes because you that's probably the number one danger people run into. They get rained on and they get wet. They're like their down sleeve leg might get wet or they don't uh, have a tent or their tent has a hole in it or if you don't have clothes that dry from the inside out like wool or polypropylene you can get in a lot of trouble so but so but you don't have to spend a fortune on it so a couple of layers of these uh and then you need a, a fleece layer and fleece is an amazing material it's super cheap you can buy good fleece stuff in from walmart also and uh you just layer it so Typically, I'm, when I'm hiking, I'm just going to be hiking in a short, short sleeve polypropylene shirt for 10 bucks. But when it gets cold, I'll put two shirts on or my long sleeve or I'll throw my fleece on there. Uh, be careful with the fleece though and the hoodies and all those kind of things because they're bulky. They don't pack down real small. So uh, I, I do bring fleece with me as one of my layers. And I also use some down. I have a down vest, uh, and you can buy you can buy pretty good down. It's just like the sleeping bag. Look at the rating. 
from the vests and the jackets, you want to find something that's at least like 700 fill quality. The 600 fill is kind of the cheaper stuff. And the down, you have to keep it dry. That's the problem. So if it's raining, uh, it's not a, it's not a good layer for in the rain. So it's for when you're in clear conditions. And I also find those on clearance sites for pretty cheap. I got a really good down vest for like 40 bucks. Uh, here's an example of fl a fleece that you probably have laying around at home. These are my jammies. And I'll even wear these on the trail with shorts on top of them if I have to. Uh, if the weather's gonna be cold, uh, I'll layer a pair of, of rain shorts over the top of these too. But these, uh, I like to sleep in these when I get to camp. And they're also kind of baggy. Uh, and the, the reason you want baggy stuff is it keeps the mosquitoes from biting through. If you wear something really tight, like some, uh, some thermals, they can bite right through that. So these are great for sleeping in and uh, they're just comfy and they don't weigh too much. This is a, a, a thin fleece. This would be considered a luxury item. So uh, just like my food one, my advice was just look around your house, see if you have stuff, take it out on some test runs. And your last option is to find one of your friends that backpacks a lot and see if he'll, he'll lend you some stuff. Ideally you wanna, well I mean not even ideally, it's kind of mandatory. If you're going to do something like a JMT hike, you have to take your gear out for some test runs because that's how you're going to find out uh, that some of your stuff isn't going to work. So uh, it's if it's something you're going to do more beyond this trip, try to scrape together some money and buy, buy some good gear, especially on your pack and your sleeping bag and your tent. You can skip on the other stuff and just slowly buy those things as you can afford them. So the outdoor industry is always coming up with upgrades to get your money. So uh, this is a good start. And if you have any questions, uh, post a question in the comments and I'll be glad to answer any questions. So I hope this helps and uh, be careful out there. Be cheap, but not so cheap that you risk your life. All right, thanks. Thanks for watching.